Standing by my side I know You are always moving I know You are making all things right I know You are always working I know Deep within my heart, I know you've won, I know you've overcome, and even in the dark, when I'm undone, I still believe it, I live by faith, and not by sight. Sometimes miracles take time While I wait, I will worship Lord, I worship your name
Morning, everybody. Mervin, you're looking pretty sharp there, buddy. I like that. Hoping everybody's having a great week. And I'm also praying that uh, you're prepared to hear from the Lord this morning. So will you help us worship him? Would you like to stand? glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, we're sure glad you're here. And if you're new here, I'm Alistair Metcalf, one of the members of the board. And we just like to welcome you here. And if you're a longtime member, boy, are we glad you're here. Yeah. And we're going to have some announcements and we'll just see what they have up there for us. And uh, we're a busy place here. And there's, oh, busy place coffee break time. Mm -hmm. So after the service out in the foyer, there is that to be had. Okay, and what else do we have? 
offering basket on the table in the back as you come in the door, and there's different ways you can give, physically or electronically there. And the clipboards, we need volunteers for different things, so as the clipboards go around, if there's something that you can help out in, please sign up for that. Now, we got birthdays in January, and we got <coughs> birthdays in February. Let me see, Mervyn, Marita, Kelsey, Rowan, Emily, Phil, Murray, Niall, my goodness, they're all over, Joshua, Kirsta, Camry, Trina, Karen, and then in February, Larry, Fern, Anthony, Shirley, Kathy, Alice, Nora, Kevin, Bobby Joe, and anniversaries. These are big ones. Larry and Alice and Tom and Shirley. Let's give them a big hand. God is good all the time. All right. What do we have next? Soup and bun. Today, I'm told. All right. And that's a big favorite around here. <laughs> So after the service today, soup and bun time once again. Baptism on February 25th. Pastor just loves that because it's a public display of somebody who's made a work or let God make a work in their life and they want to make a public statement what they've done. So baptism is a big, big thing. It doesn't save you, but it tells everybody else what's happened to you. And that's so major. So... 25th, if you're interested, contact the pastor, and he will explain the whole thing to you, what it means and why we even do it. Okay? That's February 25th. Next band of brothers, March the 2nd. Any special thing on that? Really good. Band of Brothers, March the 2nd, and be sure to sign up for that. All right. Plan to protect. Where is Kim? Is she here? There she is. Come on up, Kim, if you have something to say with that. That's rather important. Thank you. So Plan to Protect is for helpers and teachers and anyone that is a lead in ministry to be able to refresh um, their, they, it's not the new course, not the orientation, it is a refresher. And it will be on March the 3rd, early in the morning, like 8.30. And it only is about an hour. So hopefully that works out. We'll have muffins and coffee ready. And then if it doesn't work out for March the 3rd, I do have another date, March 24th. Yeah. So there sh if there isn't a clipboard this week, then there should be one next week that you can sign up for. Oh, there is. Okay, thank you. And plan to protect is very important, so I hope that you consider it. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. That's great. Okay, that's the refresher training from Kim herself. All right, what do we have next up there? Directory update, if you would like your... <coughs> name and address and even your picture in that. We're doing an update on that. So let's uh, get them filled out so everybody knows who the other one is and put them in the offering basket and that'll be great. Okay, a pastor and staff appreciation collection until the end of February. Okay, keep that in mind. It's not receivable. But this is just to tangibly show our love and appreciation to pastor and staff. And I think it's very worthwhile, very worthwhile. So keep that in mind. Now we have one other thing here. Um, we're not going to give any names out, but we have international workers with us this morning. Maybe you'd just like to stand, would you, just so people can see you? I'm not going to give any names or anything. I'll let them decide that. Thank you. And they're in a mission field away from home. And in today's world, they need your covering in prayer big time. Big time. So don't forget to pray for these people and others that come to your mind because the world is not a friendly place where Jesus is concerned. It's not a friendly place. All right, I think that just about does it, does it? Any more out there? All right, that'll be it. Daryl, back to you. 
Like stand with us, please.
seated. Mark chapter 14, verses 12 through to 25. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room? where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. There, prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they were reclining at the table and eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful and to say to him one after another, Is it I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread in the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, he took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. <coughs> Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. May the Lord add a blessing to his reading of his word this morning. We come to communion this morning. And uh, we come back to the altar. We talked about this last week. With Joshua on Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal. Where he took the Israelites just before they're going to go in and take the promised land, he takes them back to the mountain and they recommit themselves to the Lord, to his ways. They re recommit in covenant to him. They renew their covenant to him. That's what we do this morning. We renew our covenant, our commitment to Christ this morning. But we also give thanks as a thank offering. There was two offerings offered on the mountain. There was the sacrifice of the burnt animal. And there was the sacrifice of the insides of an animal that wasn't burnt. One was a peace offering of thanks, of gratefulness. That was the second the first one where the sacrifice was burnt completely was a sacrifice of atonement. The blood was put on the altar. The blood was a covering. That's what atonement means. It's a covering. Jesus shed his blood on the altar of the cross to cover our sins. To wipe them white as snow. He covers the the curse of sin and death. If you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then we invite you to partake of communion, communion this morning. It's your sacrifice. It's the offering of the bull on the altar. His shed blood covers us. And it's also a sacrifice of thanksgiving and gratitude for what he's done. 
as Jesus had brought the disciples together, he said, this is the new covenant and it's in my blood, my shed blood once and for all people. What a mon momentous occasion up in that upper room that evening that was settled. And he said, I will, you will not, you will do this continually until I return. You will celebrate and remember my shed blood and what I did for you this evening. And when you, I made a commitment and believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and trust him as our Lord and Savior, we come before him on these days where we celebrate the Lord's Supper and we do this in remembrance and celebration of what he did on the cross. So I invite you to take a moment. Come to the altar. Come to the altar. Remember that day, that hour, that minute that Jesus became real to you and you believed and trusted in him. And renew that commitment, that covenant with him. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. Confess those to him. Be renewed. Be recommitted to him this morning. And we'll take communion together. Let's take a few minutes for that. We come back to your altar, Lord Jesus. We take time to follow you into the mountain, away from society, away from the world, to recommit, to remember, to celebrate, to confess our sins receive your forgiveness. And to thank you for your shed blood. Lord Jesus, receive our gratitude, our thankfulness. May you, Holy Spirit, rest upon us. As we take the bread and as we take the cup and we recommit ourselves to you and we remember your sacrifice on the cross for us. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. I'll get uh, Tom and Alistair to come join me up front. And we're simply going to have you come to the altar this morning. Back to the altar, come to the altar. And uh, Alistair and Tom will supervise and overlook the communion elements. Take both with you and sit back at your seat. And once everybody's received, it will take it together. Let's do so.
rejected and alone like a rose trampled on the ground you took the fall and you thought was to be betrayed, he took the bread, he broke it, and he took the cup, and he gave it as a sacrifice for us, as a symbol of him giving his life that he would do.
thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the
be seated. children go to Sunday school and I think Kim will be all out there waiting for them all. <coughs> we have a lot of requests to take to the Lord and I'm sure all of you have your own particular ones. And I'm just going to lead us in a word of prayer and take your particular concern to the Lord. It's really neat to know that God can hear every single one of us at the same time and not get confused. That, that's pretty good. That, that's pretty good. And I like that. So could we all once again just stand in honor to the Lord as if we're like Moses and Israel. They stood when God came down to the tabernacle and he spoke to them. Well, now we're going to say, Lord, here we are. We're, we want to talk to you. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you that you've given us this opportunity, Lord, to love you. You've, you've come into our lives, Lord, and we're so varied with so many different situations. Father, there's people in our congregation here that are in serious need of a touch from you. And to God, we know you can do it because we've witnessed it in the past where you have reached down and you've done amazing things. Father, we just thank you for those that have had another year on their life. We call it birthdays. We call it anniversaries. You've been good to these people, Lord. But, Father, there are people that are hurting because of the way life has dealt them. So, Father, we just pray that you would come down, that you would reach into their heart, their lives, their bodies, their mental state, and touch them for your honor and your glory. Father, you're a God who knows no bounds. You're not restricted. You're not held back. But you love those people that call on you and say, Abba, Father, we need you. Lord, we thank you that at this moment we can be here and worship you and praise your name. And Lord, at the moment we don't have persecution and oh, do we thank you for that. We praise you for that because so many parts of the world are in serious distress. But Lord, we give you thanks and praise for what we have here. And Father God, we are so grateful for pastor and family. We ask you, Lord, to bless them immeasurably. Let them know, dear God, in uncertain terms how much you love them for what they are doing and letting you work through them. And Father, we pray that as Kim leads the children in Sunday school now, that you would get your word deep in their heart. May they not forget what they hear because your word is life. There is no other life but you. And Lord, the song we sang, holy, holy, to be separate, to be set apart. Oh, God, help us to learn what that means. In everything we think and do in business and jobs, Lord, we are to be set apart for you. To be holy before you. Lord, be with our speakers this morning, we pray. And we thank you, Lord, for your goodness. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Now, this morning we have some international workers with us, and because of their situation, I'm not going to mention names. I will let them introduce themselves as they see fit. Um, I remember as a young lad, we were warned about this very explicitly because even when I was a kid, we had people would come that you never even showed their pictures on a screen, you never gave their name, where they were from, because it meant life and death either to them or to someone else. And so we will let them introduce themselves the way they see fit. So, folks, why don't you just come on up? Come on up. And they're going to tell us what God is doing in their part of the world. Good morning. Sorry, we're just getting started here. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Hi, we're Andy and Janet, and we serve with the Alliance in Asia on Soli Island. We've lived there since August 2003, so 
20 plus years, and it's where we've raised our three kids, Micah, Anna, and Ethan. And you can see them in the photos there. Um, our youngest is the one in the striped t-shirt. Um, Ethan is in grade 11, and he does online homeschooling through the, the um, provincial curriculum. So he gets an Alberta diploma when he graduates. Um, our daughter, Anna, is standing next to me in the photo. She graduated from high school in June last year. And then she spent the fall in Thailand working with an anti-trafficking organization and doing a discipleship program. And next year, she'll be going to McEwen. Um, yeah, she's being accepted there. And then up in the top corner, you see our daughter, Micah, with her husband, Johnny. Um, Micah will graduate this spring with her LPN, her nursing degree. And her husband is actually currently in Regina at the RCMP depot. And he will um, complete that in the middle of May. And then we'll find out, I guess, sometime this month where they're being posted. So you can keep all of those of our kids in your prayers. Um, over the past 20 years in Asia, we have been students, we have been English teachers, we have been community development workers, coffee house owners, and we've been business people. Yeah, so I feel like the training that we had to go overseas, um, it didn't apply uh, in, many, in many ways uh, when we got to Soli. Um, you can change the slide now to the next one. Soli is a, is a very small island. It's about 89 kilometers by 89 kilometers. It's about the size of Leduc County times two. So it fit about four million people into two Leduc counties. That's it's quite a, it, it's pretty, pretty compact. Um, and 3.8 million of those people are the Soli, the indigenous people. The majority, um, the majority of their livelihood um, are their fishermen or rice and chili farming. So. Um, it's pretty pretty basic. Um, the Soli are generally fairly poor people. 99.9% .9 of the Soli are Muslim, and they don't know Jesus. And our goal on living there is to give the Soli people access to Jesus. Our team on the island is currently running an English language center called Masters English. We coach and equip local English teachers. You can see them in the picture underneath the sign. Um, we coach them so that they can teach other Soli people English. They have um, beginner, intermediate, and advanced English classes. And then we also have outreach classes in local villages and monthly English clubs, uh, like baking nights or movie nights or English conversation nights and even book clubs in English. We're currently working on proposals as well for local universities so that we can help to equip their students and professors um, in their English language skills. So when we first meet, um, when, when people find out that we're in international workers, we do get some interesting responses. Some are, are intrigued and want to know more. They ask, what's the weather like? What are the people like? What do you do there? And we've answered that question a little bit. Sometimes people share with us their international experiences, um, and others tell us that they wish they could also serve overseas. Uh, we inevitably, uh, have interactions with people who are <coughs> uncertain or nervous about what it might be like overseas. Is there persecution? Are there riots? Are there natural disasters? Creatures creeping into our home? And I'll give you the short answer. I'll say yes. <laughs> <coughs> A few people ask us about the how. How did we know that we were to go overseas? What happened to make us decide to live on a far off island among a people who are historically resistant to Jesus? Why would we leave Canada? I know my own mother asked that question many, many times. Um, if you'd like to hear the answer to any of these questions, please talk to us um, after the service and we'll try to answer. <laughs> when we first moved to Soli Island 20 years ago, we felt a combination of excitement for the adventure and we also had a, a sense of surrendering to God in the face of a lot of unknowns. Most Jesus followers will recognize that to follow him, they've had to surrender to his will and his ways. Sometimes we look at saying yes to following him as the ultimate in surrender. What more can be surrendered than our means of finding eternal salvation? Surrender means to cease resistance, to submit to an authority. It also means to abandon oneself entirely to an emotion or a person. And that's what we're going to talk to, to you about this morning. Surrender to Jesus is more than just the original ascent to his power to save us. 
It is a day-by-day, moment-by-moment abandonment to his will and his purposes in our lives. Surrender to Jesus doesn't happen just once. It happens every day, sometimes more than once each day. Surrendering to Jesus um, each day requires us to orient our heart to his will for each moment of our lives. And when we think that we're in control of our lives and our families, we tend to act to stop asking God what he wants and we stop listening to his gentle directions. Instead of resting in God's plan, we start making our own plans and that can be exhausting. And we read in 2 Corinthians 1, 8b and 9, Paul and Timothy share that, that they felt they had received the sentence of death, but this happened that they might not rely on themselves, but on God who raises the dead. That's surrender, leaning into Jesus his, for his guidance and his will. Now, there's certainly a place for perseverance in our journeys with Jesus, but perseverance is not the ultimate goal and, or destination. The ultimate goal is hope. This is only found in surrender to the Lord. We see the promise of this goal in Philemon 1.6, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. God's ultimate plan is not for us to stay in places where we suffer, persevering. Rather, his plan is for us to live full, abundant, and joy-filled lives. Jesus says, The thief does not come come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they might have life and that they might have it abundantly. When we're caught up in uh, persevering instead of surrender, we're still relying on ourselves, our own efforts, our own answers, and our own strength to navigate the life that Jesus has given us. To get to the place of abundance that Jesus talks about, we need to give ourselves time, we need to humble ourselves and submit to Jesus in trust. We need to recommit ourselves to the fundamental knowledge that God is in control of everything. And we can trust him, even with the painful parts of our story. So Psalm 62 verse 8 reminds us that we can trust in him at all times. We can pour out our hearts to him for God is our refuge. We can do this because God is all knowing and all powerful. And the scriptures say again in Psalms, he determines the number of stars and calls each by name. Great is the Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. Psalm 147 4. And five, and I just want to—I'm going to break script here for a minute. Um, this morning, I just really felt the presence of God. Jesus, Jesus is here this morning, and I was just struck by the fact that we have all this opportunity to to experience Him, to learn how to surrender to Him, and um, my heart is just broken that the soul they just don't have that chance. And it's so difficult, and I just, I'm just asking right now that you would pray for the Soli people for the work over in that part of the world because it's hard. And I'm, I'm so joyful and happy about being able to worship God freely um, here this morning, and I don't take that for granted anymore. And um, so if you think about us or you think about the Soli, uh, pray for the Soli, that they would get a chance to hear this kind of stuff and they can surrender to Jesus. Okay, so we're going to be sharing some stories of surrender with you. Sometimes our surrender involves a significant decision or turning point, and other times it's a small or seemingly inconsequential decision. Um, It was October 2018, and I was really struggling to find my joy. So that was about, almost well, five years ago. We'd returned to Soli Island in July after a year away, and amid our transition during the month of August, we lived through a stressful three-week period of six cascading large-scale earthquakes, (laughs) 7.0 on the Richter scale, which claimed nearly 600 lives. In addition to that, our oldest daughter had graduated from high school that June and was now living away from us for the first time. I felt as though I was barely holding on. I don't know if you feel like that sometimes, like you're just holding on until the next day and the next day and the next day. During this time, I was reading two different books written about two different topics, yet within a three-day period, they both had a chapter with the same title. Resignation versus surrender. Those sections pierced me to my core. I realized that I had been resigned to my life on Soli Island. 
It looked right. I was, I was there, wasn't I? But my heart attitude wasn't right. I had of my own volition chosen that I was just going to push through until this phase of life was over. I was no longer relying on the one who had called me. I was doing this on my own, and truthfully, I was doing it against my will. I still believed that God had called me to Soli Island, so I decided in that moment to choose surrender. I opened my hands, I literally opened my hands, and I placed my life before my loving Heavenly Father. I surrendered my life and my will to Him. I then asked Him, Father, what do I need to do today to be surrendered to you completely? The response surprised me. Buy sheets, he answered, bed sheets. You see, I'd been sleeping, or we'd been sleeping on bed sheets that were nearly 10 years old, and they were nearly worn through. Like, we could look, lift them up, and we could look through and have a conversation through the sheets. I had resisted buying new sheets, because I'd hoped that this season of living on Soli Island, of needing new sheets, was nearly over. And to buy new sheets meant that I was committing to staying longer. Well, later that week, I went out to buy sheets. And I can't even begin to tell you the feeling of joy I experienced as I put my money down on the counter at that store. That was proof enough in itself. When we walk in step with the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is evident, and the joy was there, and I experienced more joy and peace in that moment of buying sheets than I had in a very long time. You know, Janet asked me, should I share that story? And I said, absolutely. That's such a practical, real thing, you know? Um, yeah, one of my most one of my most recent um, surrender stories begins about three years ago, and it carries on until today. For five difficult years, uh, we served on Soli Island with no teammates. One word summed up our experience: lonely. In late 2020, God answered the cry of our hearts to bring teammates to us. Our teammates Garth and Monica, and they joined our team, and that's them right there. We began meeting via Zoom until we were able to start teaming, to teaming together in person on the island in the fall of 2022. So when we started to, to plan, we, we dreamed and we prayed and we planned about how to continue access to the Soli people. And the only pathway for residency and work permits at the time was through business. So we were led by the Father to, uh, to form a coaching and consulting company we thought we could combine our experience of, of local knowledge and language and our um, understanding and training in coaching um, and form a company. So our idea was that we were going to bring ethical and biblical principles to Soli Island. We could bring Jesus to business owners, managers, and their staff. What a great idea. That's what I, that's what I thought, and God was leading us. As we moved to the island and got things set up, our situation became increasingly difficult. We rented and renovated our new office space. We hired a solely man who we planned to train as a coach and a consultant. And this particular guy, this, this solely guy, he's heard uh, the gospel several times. And I feel like he's on, he's on a journey. And uh, I've been journeying with him for uh, close to 10 years now. Um, but then the Soli government released updates that foreigners would no longer be able to receive work permits for the type of business that we opened. A few months later, we discovered that we were also not legally allowed to coach or consult any of our clients as foreigners. We were getting new messages and new updates to the law. All of our coaching and consulting had to be done by local Soli people. I was frustrated with the government and the rules. I was also frustrated with God. Why would God open a door just to close it? And like Janet, I was just trying to hang on. I was trying to make things work so that we could have this coaching, uh, coaching company for the kingdom. Our team started talking about a plan B and what that might look like. I was resistant. I didn't want a plan B. I was controlling and not trusting. Do you, does that ring a bell with anyone? I heard a little giggle over there. I was controlling and not trusting in God. And I've heard this so many times. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him or acknowledge him. 
and he will make your path straight. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. I've heard that verse, I don't know, a hundred times from our former teammates. I'm like, yeah, that's a great verse. That's a great verse. And it was hitting me like a ton of bricks in that moment. Well, God's plan turned out to be the right one. And it's funny how that works, how God seems to know more than us. His plan was the English Language Center that we opened in November of 2023, Master's English. So to get on board with God's plan, first I needed to trust. It was a matter of the heart. Our hearts are complicated kind of things. They're full of ideas, desires, emotions, and goals. They can be a strong force in us, and it was a strong force in me at the time. And when we don't trust God with all of our heart, we can get confused and frustrated and angry. We can miss out on the good things that God has for us. And that was happening to me. For me, trusting, um, for me, trusting God to do something entirely different uh, was very, very hard. Letting go has taken me a long time, and six months later, I'm still working through it. Then I needed to submit, to surrender, to let go of my plan, my path. As we all know, God's ways are much better than ours, and he declares this in his word. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither your ways, my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Isaiah 55, 8 to 10. So God wants us to be on mission with him. He wants to change us. He wants to transform us. But it's not going to happen without surrendering our hearts and our actions to him. Our pain, our stress, broken relationships, our failures, all of it. Will we surrender to him? Surrendering means recognizing that we can't win. We're too weak. In war, surrendering to an enemy often means more pain. But when we surrender to God, it's a lot different, isn't it? There's clarity, there's joy, and there's peace. When we let God take over, love replaces hate, and forgiveness replaces bitterness, and hope drives away fear. This is an invitation for all people. We want the solely to experience this. We want all of you to experience the goodness of God in every area of your lives. So we have some questions for you to ask yourself this morning. Am I paying attention to the Spirit's prompting to follow him to the unknown and the uncomfortable? Am I willing to be obedient to the prompting? How is God inviting me to be a part of his local and global mission? because he is inviting you to be a part of both of those things. Am I engaging in believing community so that we can walk together into what God is calling us to? Because he's often calling the whole community, so is the Duke Alliance being invited by God to partner with him in some way that you can walk together in? And then finally, what is hindering my response to God's invitation? Is there something you need to start doing or stop doing so that you can respond to him as he's asking you to? Yeah, and if you feel led to partner with us in reaching the Soli, um, there are a few things you can do. And uh, they're fairly obvious, but we will cover them. First, pray. Come and talk to us after the service. You can pick up one of our prayer cards. Um, there it is. And um, you can email us to that email address on that prayer card. And uh, we can start sending you uh, monthly updates. Usually it's monthly, um, depending. Sometimes it's more often, sometimes a little bit less. But we're, we'll try to be consistent. So you can, we can let you know how you can partner in prayer with us. Secondly, you can give. You can donate to the Alliance Canada's website and our project with the uh, language center is called uh, Soli English Center. That's correct, right there? Soli English Center. And another way that you can partner with us is you can actually come and visit. Some people say, well, going to a place like that, how can you go and visit? We've had, we've had groups, small groups that have come to visit. And there are now more opportunities um, 
because there could be possible engagement in the language center now in uh, teaching English. And we also uh, invite you to come and pray. We've had um, small uh, prayer teams come and do prayer trips across the island. Um, and it's been very, very encouraging. And we've seen uh, some breakthrough as a result of it. So come and pray and you can come and join in our, um, if you can speak English, I think you can come. <laughs> so uh, that, there's some opportunities there. So sometimes surrendering to God looks like something big, like getting on a plane and moving to the other side of the earth or starting a new career path. But sometimes it's a small act, buying bed sheets, inviting someone over for a cup of coffee, sending a note of encouragement to a friend. How is the Father inviting you to surrender today? I just want to pray. Can I pray for, for you guys? Heavenly Father, um, I just thank you for this congregation. Um, I thank you that you love each one here. And you want each one of us to submit to you, to surrender to you. And how, however you're speaking to us today, Lord, give us the courage to submit and to surrender to whatever it is that you want us to do today. I pray your blessing. I pray... Um, Lord, that you would go with us as we leave, as we actually, as we fellowship and then as we go throughout our week. And uh, we just thank you that we can meet together today. And we thank you um, for the love of Jesus that's here. And may it spread beyond these walls into the community and yeah, to the far reaches of the earth. In Jesus name. Amen. Thank you. Could we just have the members of the board come up? We're going to pray for these folk. Um, I pastored among the First Nations in Canada, so have a little bit of a feeling of people that can speak your language, but they live totally different. It, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. So we're just going to gather around here. and The call of God can take many forms, and it can affect you differently. And these people have heard what God has said. They've gone to this little island that is just crushing with people. So the mission field is right around them, right, right around them. And they need to see what God sees. They need to hear what God hears. And they need to go when God says go. Because sometimes he says stop and wait a while. Let's just pray for them. Father, we, we bring our dear couple to you right now. Oh, God, and their family. And Lord, you know the, the details of what they go through on a day-to-day -day basis. So Father God, we're just praying that you would just pour out your Holy Spirit upon them on a 24-hour basis. Lord, that they will see you, hear you, feel you. And Lord, they'll know where to go and when to go. Because Father, you're a God of order. You're a God of, of decency. And you want everything done in a, in a proper manner. So Lord, show them what they're to do. Guide them, Lord, we pray. And Lord, with these English classes, oh Lord, what, what a ministry. Dear God, we pray your anointing on that. Lord, a double portion, we pray that your, your word would go forth, oh God, through these classes some way, somehow, because God, you are the God of the impossible. Lord, when we can't go any further, that's when you start. So Lord, we pray right now that you bless these two. Lord, you guide them and Lord, protect their family because Lord, we also know that when you start working through people, families can be attacked. Oh Lord, we've seen it. So we pray, Lord, for their family, wherever their kids are, that you surround them and you protect them. Oh Lord, we pray, Lord, that they are not distracted from the work you've called them to. Go before them, go behind them, just cover them with your Holy Spirit, we pray, and we give you thanks, Lord, in Jesus' name. Now the music team for one more, if they would like to come up for one more. Do you like
like to stand with us, please? Thank you for your presentation. Um, it's just not a presentation. You don't know how you've affected people this morning. Uh, something that you guys mentioned for me has affected me deeply. Uh, we trust in the Lord God, even though we don't understand, even though we don't we don't see as He sees, we we don't know as He knows. But He says, "Trust in Me. Put your faith in Me." If we as we talked about last week, coming back to the altar, we know that the person that was 
giving the sacrifice, they put their hand on their sacrifice. And that represented, that's my sacrifice. That's my sin. This is my sacrifice. This is my life. Because that sacrifice meant atonement, the shed blood, meant that I have a covering. And they just didn't put their hand on it. Lackadaisically, they, as the word says, leaned into their sacrifice. You lean into Jesus. He is our life. He is our life. He is our lifeblood. He has gave us forgiveness. He gave us redemption. He gives us healing. He gives us power. You may be struggling this morning or somebody you know is struggling. Trust in Jesus. Come to him. Lean into him. He hears your prayers. He knows what you're thinking. He knows what you're saying. He knows where your heart is. He just wants you to lean into him. And I'm saying that for myself this morning. Lean into God. Lean into Jesus. Father God, we lean into you, Lord Jesus. We seek you for strength. We seek you for health. We seek you for wisdom and understanding when we don't understand we don't know we can't see the path but you can so Holy Spirit come upon us in your peace in your grace come upon us in power and strength Reinforce our faith. Speak for us. Pray for us when we can't, when we don't know how to pray. Oh, Father God, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, come upon us. Breathe into us. Breathe into those that need your life. As Elisha Raise the child from the dead. Raise those we care about and love from the dead. Raise us from the dead. Our life is in your blood. It's in your hands. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. We have fellowship after the service here. So, soup and bun. It's in the far, far end. Come join us. If you didn't bring anything, doesn't matter. Bring yourself. Have a time of fellowship. Meet Andy and Janet. Ask them all your questions you want. Establish, get a prayer card. Establish some relationship there. But may the Lord bless you, keep you. May he shine his face upon you. May you know his peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're dismissed.